Monday, and you know what that means. My level's too loud, and it's time for another exciting episode of Taxi TV Live! Yeah, baby. <laughs> Nothing but first class on this joint. This week, starring special guest star, Mr. Bob Mayer! Yeah! Oh, welcome to the big show, yeah, sir. <laughs> Did you pay for that sample? <laughs> You know, I actually looked in the legalese. Yes, there's there's the taxi band. Everyone's got to get one. And when I bought it, I actually read the packaging and then asked them at Toys R Us if I could open it up. And I read the little booklet. There was nothing True in there. True pro. Yeah. I love it. I wouldn't use it otherwise. I love it. Um, oh, let me get the chat room open. Okay. There's the chat room. There they are filling up as we speak. Nobody ever shows up on time anymore. Everyone's busy writing music. That's right. All right. Um, hello, you guys. Let me see who we have here. Adriana, Anna Yarbrough. Hi, Marcus. Um, Asaf, Marcus, Cass, Clark. Hey, Clark. Danny Weber, Darren Fletcher, Dean Turner, Gloria Covington, Jan Bars, Jazz Stan. Uh, My eyesight's not so good no more. Yeah. Mine either, honestly. Goodness uh, gracious. Ken Potter, <laughs> Richard Charles, Peter Rayhill. Hey, Matt. Thanks for turning that around so fast. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about you seconds ago. Peter D'Angelo, Peter Rayhill, Richard Charles, Robin Lynch, Sasha. Anyway, uh, I'll be here all the whole show, and names just keep getting added. added. Uh, okay. Anyway, um, Bob Mayer. Oh, that's what I didn't do. I didn't print out your bio, but Bob is the CEO and slave master at Black Hills <laughs> Music. <laughs> he is. Oh my it's God. strictly slavery over there. Oh Cracking the whip. Lord, no, actually, Lord. they run a great operation. We've had uh, many, many years of uh, great relationship. I and, agree. Uh, we have a bromance, you know. It's like <laughs> we'll be talking to each other at night. I'm in bed with my laptop. He's still working, and Back we're both. And yeah. Well, we never stop. I know. Um, anyway, uh, Bob himself is a musician and a composer, so he's sensitive to your issues. Um, Very much so. And how long have you been in business now? Black Toast Music, 1990. So what are we? 20, 70, 27 years. 27 years. 27. Yeah, years. 27 years. Wow. Is that crazy. And, Thousands upon thousands of placements. A lot of placements. Um, really good placements. And, and this but, year's been better than ever, guys. Yay. But for all the people that are going to watch this after the fact, they're all going to try and bombard you with music, so I'm going to put the warning out now. We're going to talk about this during the rest of the show, but, you know, I can't get guys like Bob to show up. If they think every time they're going to show up, by the time they get home, they're going to have 3,000 <laughs> pieces of music in, in their mailbox. So please don't do that. And don't wait two or three days and think you're going to be the one that's going to sneak one in. Please. We can't get these super expensive, high-quality guests that I thousands of dollars to show up <laughs> to do this. I get paid? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that's right. Scale, Bob. Scale. Oh, my God. Uh, so yeah, okay, I've hit the warning, uh, don't bombard him. Um, <laughs> yes, Bob is. Uh, okay, anyway, uh, so I've warned you about bombarding him. Um, oh my God, why the name Black Toast? That's a long answer. There's a lot of... Boy, these guys are, these guys type fast. They do. They have nothing else except... Goodness gracious. We have to do a whole show. They just have their keyboard. I'm telling you, Much man. easier on that end. Okay, so, uh, so I, was, uh, I wrote a note, set up for the rest of the show. So how many composers, give or take, would you guess that you've got? Well, because you, I knew you were going to ask about 475 right now. Okay. Give or so take. now imagine if you had roughly 475 composers. Where's my calculator? And each one of those had just, I spilled soda on this, so the oh. keys are sticky. Let's say 400, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you shop at Staples on sale uh, too? Yeah. 475 composers, let's say each one hits you with a 15 minute question once a month. So that is 7,125 minutes divided by 60 minutes. So that would be 118 hours a month. Let's divide that time by 4.3, mm -hmm. which is number of weeks in a month. 
Um, so that would be 27.6 hours a week. So roughly half of a work week, um, not for Bob, but for normal people. That would be half of a work week just doing emails um, or phone calls. Um, that's why I don't stop working. And that's why, see, you guys can't hit him up, so he's got time for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I was talking mixes in my car on the way here. He was. As soon as he walked in the door, he said, uh, I'm just talking to Matt Vanderbo about a mix, changing a beat, and Matt had it turned around by the time Bob dropped his tush in the chair. That is correct. Thanks, Matt. Um, so... Talk about time or lack thereof, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so some of the stuff that I perceive to be on your daily to-do list is tagging, uploading, pitching, paperwork, tracking income, writing checks, PRO registrations, prepping for Dashbox, prepping for SoundMiner, whatever else, mastering, all this stuff goes on. You start thinking about it, it's daunting, huh? It is. And... Yet people will call and say, so why didn't you like my track? That is true. Or I'll get emails. And, and some people are very respectful. Some people, thankfully, I have goodwill in the community and, and they know sort of the bar that you know I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking for that bar, as we've talked a million times, because my clients, it's taken me 26, 27 years to have these clients, yeah. and I know what they expect nine times out of ten when you're dealing like we were talking about empire some of these you know very prominent shows they don't mess around you know and even if i send something that i think is fantastic right you know uh, there's some stiff competition out there there's some really good writers no yeah. doubt about it you know there's another competitor who i won't mention but and he's a friend of mine and he is very he's got some really good talent i mean there's no doubt about it so you you haven't cornered the market on every single good writer in the entire world ah uh, no no i have tried believe me uh, so that brings up an interesting point we we're just talking about um empire for a second and just before we went live we we're talking about uh talking about we had a situation um, where one of our screeners didn't forward some hip hop instrumental stuff. Uh, and I think, I could be wrong, but it was if it wasn't Empire in particular, it was another show at that level, one of those shows sure. where, where actual like records make it into the show. Absolutely. And they've got people sitting down to co-write ostensibly, in quotes, um, over a hip hop track. They're trying to come up with lyric, lyrics or a top line um, on a track. And so the listing that we would run would be looking for instrumental stuff, uh, instrumental hip hop. And some of our members who have great instrumental hip hop cues that have been forwarded a zillion times and have been picked up by libraries, probably including sure. yours, I'm sure including yours, didn't get forwarded. And then they're like, why didn't I get forwarded? Explain the difference between hip hop cues and that empire situation. Well, it, you know, it's a case-by-case -case basis, and I have to make these judgment calls all the time. Um, that particular thing you're describing, I mean, it, that's a Pandora's box, because if, if, it's, <laughs> if they're, it's a scene and they're writing this song, that could be, the song could be in any number of stages of completion. Right. So if you send a track that's basically done, and there's a melody on it, or there's... Too complete, then. Too complete. Right. Then it wouldn't be like a vocal, you know, someone writing, in some stage of writing the track, you know, whether it just be a pad, a uh, drum beat, uh, some changes, and so maybe you not have much to else. Use, you have to use your spidey sense to kind of anticipate where that... Yes. Where that level of completion is going to be for that scene, based on the brief you would get, which would be, you know, a couple of people writing on a track. And, and from your vast amount of experience, you would say, well, then they probably don't have a, a vocal melody or a lyric yet. Well, it would probably be a track that I would never have in my catalog because nobody oh. would ever be looking for that. Uh, up until a few years ago. <laughs> well, I, well and I, but, but even still, if Empire was looking for that specific thing, I would probably call a writer I know right. and spell out exactly what I'm looking for and I would give them the caveat and it's probably not going in my catalog. But if the track gets used with this much going on, 
I would advise them at a later date because it would be a license. Right. Finish the track. And a lot of times these shows actually want to sign, they want 100% of your publishing. And here's the weird thing. I think you and I have talked about this. You brought this up before. Where they, I have yet to have anybody do that to me. I've now checked it out with a couple of, a couple of highly qualified people for, without giving them away but um, that said to me, yeah, they will actually take your tracks now, take 100% of the publishing, but not put it in a catalog that's going to be used to be shopped or pitched anywhere else. They just want to own it. Yeah, and not even so much for the money-making part, although I'm sure that's a component of it. It's more about, well, if the show goes to DVD, if the show goes out on whatever, you know, that they need to control it for those reasons, which I understand. Uh, you would think they would do a licensing deal that would give them an all-encompassing umbrella. Well, that's the way licenses are. I mean, there is no such thing as, you know, uh, perpetuity Partial. anymore. I mean, it's just, that's what that is. Yeah. It's, it's all rights. Here, now, and for the rest now. of the universe. Exactly. Yeah. So I can't imagine that that would be the reason. Now, there was something that came up with me recently where I thought I had a killer film placement. It was a cover of a well-known song, which I won't say what it is, but um, it was in, and then at some point right before the final judgment, the film company decided to pay someone, work for hire, Ooh. to create, the, now this cover I sent in was killer. Yeah. I mean, it was quintessentially on the nose. Um, but they paid somebody to do a work for hire so that they could own this piece of music. And the only reason I could think that they would do that was this particular piece of music gets licensed a bazillion times a year. Uh -huh. So I'm thinking that they're probably thinking, we will never have to pay for this piece of music ever again. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that, that makes sense to me. Um, okay, so the show today is about the biggest mistakes, and we are going to do a lot of mistakes. There was one that I was going to add right before the I show. I You said 10, and I looked at our notes, and oh, my yeah. God, there's like, it's endless, guys. Yeah. I lie to these guys all the time. I tell them 10, I do 15 or 20. Oh, my you know. goodness. Uh, okay, so the... Uh, oh, uh, also, I want you to tell them how many... This isn't a mistake, but just to give you an idea of how busy Bob's day is, you once gave me a number of how many emails you send out per day. I sent somewhere in the neighborhood of, I want to say, 160, maybe 200 this morning. Wow. The day I talked to you, you said 118. That's even more impressive. Well, it's because I keep meeting <laughs> new people. Right. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah. So imagine that. I mean, I thought I was bad. I, I get about 300 emails a day and probably send between 80 and 100 a day, and you've definitely kicked my butt. It's, it's, it's you know, all day long. It's, well, no, those were in people's inboxes at 9.30 this morning. Yeah. What time do you get up in the morning? I don't sleep. Okay. <laughs> No, you know, I, I try and, you know, earmark my time as best as possible. I'm, I'm a fairly organized person, um, and you just have to make judgment calls, and you pick your moments, and I have to, uh, I know if I wait too late in the day, people are bogged down, mm -hmm. especially, you know, if I want their attention, it's best when they're fresh. That's been my experience after 27 years, and people get back. Mm -hmm. Now, some people take a few days because they're swamped. Right. You know, but um, no, I've got a lot of, I've got so many balls in the air right now. It would blow your mind how many pieces of music I have on various stages of holds for ads, films, uh, TV, you name it. Yeah. And, you know, you got to follow up, which part of this is we're going to be talking about yes. follow ups. Yes following up with me. I have to basically follow the rules we're going to be giving you, yep. which is I cannot pester these people. These people are so freaking busy and up the food chain. Well, let's make that our first mistake. Sure. Uh, oh, it is the first mistake. Oh, there we go. The follow-up. Okay, so tax, let's, uh, hypothetical, but it's not hypothetical, Taxi sent a member's music to you. Right. You asked them for additional stuff because you heard what you liked. Okay. And you reached out and said, hey, John, I like what I heard from the Taxi Forward. Um, and the follow-ups begin. Uh, so you say, what else do you have? And then just emails. Like, uh, I will, I will, well, I will say this, um, and this is what I love about taxi 
and uh, is that largely I don't get bombarded by that. Um, what I will, yay! Um, you make me proud. What I will say is, is there are, and there always will be. There's the handful. Mm -hmm. There's the five or seven. And then, yes, I've opened a Pandora's box. Um, and, you know, I, I tr do my best to be nice. But it, some, and we've <laughs> talked about this. Some people I've had to kind of like fire. Yeah. It's like, I can't work with you anymore. Yeah. You know, it's just too much. It's when you look at the number of emails you send in a day, the amount of time that goes into the list that I made, which was tagging, uploading, pitching, paperwork, tracking income, writing checks, PRO registrations, prepping for Dashbox, prepping for SoundMiner, whatever else, mastering if necessary, talking to Matt Vanderbo from your car on the way out here, uh, probably texting while you were driving. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's why um, I got Siri. Oh, there you go. Siri, tell Vanderbo, change the beat. No, actually, <laughs> no, it was, it was Siri, call Matt Vanderbo. Oh, uh, okay. Bluetooth. Uh, anyway, so, yeah, with all that stuff to do, who's got time for hand-holding? It's a good point. I mean, uh, how do I say this? I There are certain things I don't mind, meaning that there are super, super talented cats out there. And there will be a time where I'll get a track and I'll go, oh my God, this is a killer track, but the mix isn't right. Mm -hmm. Or I'll go, oh, killer mix, but oh my God, the chorus just, we listened to something when I got here. Yep. Killer song, killer mix, chorus got there, was like, oh man. So in those instances, and this comes from me being a songwriter, and my knowledge that if I, if I call a person and I go, you know, if you change that chorus, and maybe throw a few ideas at them. I go, you know what? I could end up having a killer song. Yeah. Or like with Matt, you know, hey man, you know what? Think about changing this kick drum pattern. I think, just try this. Let's see what happens, you know, uh, for various reasons. But that's very different from somebody saying, why aren't you taking my stuff? What can I change about it? And then doing that after every submission. Yeah, like I say, thankfully, it's, I don't get, too pestered by that. I mean, my my basic response is, it's just not right for my clients. Mm -hmm. You know, which really is the end all criteria. You know. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I may like it, but I gotta I gotta get the. You know, I've actually turned. We've talked about this. Yes. I've turned stuff away that I think is a killer song. If you don't think you can make money with if, it for you and the writer. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, country is not my biggest. You know, in yeah. L.A., how much country production is going on? Right. I yeah. mean. What, we had one show for a heartbeat. Yeah. You know? Two. Far. Heart of Dixie in Nashville. And, and and you know what? It's not that I don't get those requests, but they're they're not they're not uh, what's the number Listen, one genre out there? Hip hop. There you go. Right? Boom. Do I get an A or anything? You get an A. <laughs> you should run a company. Didn't even take a beat. Right? <laughs> so I mean uh, now if it's a killer country song I go, you know what? Uh, for whatever reason, oh, that'll work great in a in a bar, or oh, that'll work great here. Right. But if it's a like some unbelievable ballad, right? Yeah. I'm going to go. Okay, so not only do I have to find a show that want, is going to look for country or a, a film, it's it's going to be a ballad, meaning that most likely it's going to be like playing at two in the morning in some club, or it's a montage scene. Yeah. How many of those come across your plate? And because it's country, it's probably got a lot of specificity in the lyric, which makes it really hard to use. Exactly. Well, and I have these comments with people. It's like, lyrics are important. Yeah. I see some people just like fly through it. And I would tell you, lyrics are really important. Title of a song is important. Yeah. Because if you're a supervisor and you're looking at, at uh, you've reached out to your top 10 go-to people. And your top 10 go-to people have sent you maybe five songs each. That's 50 songs. Yep. You're going to look down that list of 50 titles. You go, oh, that's interesting. I want to hear that. Yeah. That, I'm a big proponent of that. I teach that on Taxi TV all the time. Let's go on to mistake number two. Do not attempt to reach out to a TV production company or a network to follow up. Absolutely not. Tell them about that. Oh, God. Well, 
I understand it. You know, people get excited when they get a placement, and I've had this happen to me. Um, get a placement, large show, killer placement, and uh, it may even be a montage, which are, you know, I'm very lucky. I've had some unbelievable montage moments. They, those pay more. Well, they can or they, you know, but I'll tell you, you know, as a writer, it just explodes. Meaning, you know, uh, I have these people selling their music, Yeah. you know, and, you know, we won't go into names, but you hit those montage moments in a big show and everybody goes, what is that? Where is that? Or they, they go to Tune Find and find out who the artist is. Next thing you know, you're... Or, Cause, uh, right. I mean, not cause Shazam. Uh, oh, Shazam. Shazam. I had the A and the Z part. <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, those people, you know, they're making dough. They're selling. Yeah. They're selling their song. So, um, but then I've had this happen, and then the writer will go to NBC or Warner Brothers or whatever, and call them directly. Yeah. And go, hey, can I get a copy of the video? Or hey, can I? And all I will tell you guys is. It kills the chances for us ever doing that again. Meaning that these people do not want to hear from these writers going, "Hey, can I get a copy of this?" It's it's just it's a faux pas in the industry. It's a huge faux pas. I get the excitement factor. I really do because you and I are the kind of guys that get excited for the writers. Absolutely, like, I'm so happy to see that you got that. Absolutely. But got to be professional in reaching out to the receptionist at NBC saying my name is Bobby Smith and I just found out from my friend Bob Mayer that my song I Love You Mary was in a montage on such and such a show last night. Right, right. It's, Whoa. Yeah. Well, it just opens up the door for, you don't want the networks to get ticked off at me for getting a placement for you. Yeah. Um, you know, they're going to go, they, hey, you know. All future doors may close because of that. Exactly. Exactly. That's a huge faux pas. Mm -hmm. Please don't do that. Um, go to YouTube. You'll find it. Especially if it's a montage moment. If you can wait long enough. I mean, it may not show up the day after. And that's, right. that's the problem is the excitement is so great in the moment. It's true. That it's hard to Hey, and I'm excited too. Let me tell you, getting those placements, yeah. they're not easy. Yeah. Do not badger publishers about whether or not they sent your song or instrumental to a TV show, film, or whatever the production is. Yeah, yeah, that's, it, it's, it's not good. I mean, uh, look, we're in the business to make money for us, for you, for everybody. So um, if we don't send something, it's because to the best of our knowledge, it is not appropriate. The thing that I have to be careful of is, again, these clients, uh, let, me, let me back up. Years ago, sitting with a music supervisor at lunch, having a conversation about one of my competitors. Mm -hmm. Oh, we, the supervisor says to me, I don't go to that person anymore. And I said, really? Why not? Because um, every time I reach out, they send me music and it's wrong. Mm -hmm. And I said, ah, I will never be that person. I will never be that person. So, you know, we're very, very particular about what we send. We're very, we, we dig deep. I think we've had this conversation where someone will say, you know, I'm looking for lounge music. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just the first example I can think of. Lounge music. What is lounge music? Was it Vegas lounge? Is it, uh, 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 you know... Uh, Downtown L.A. martini bar it, after a lawyer's busy day in the office. Exactly. So what we do is we'll I'll, I'll look at who the supervisor is, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, this gentleman's in his 40s. Oh, this this guy's in his 20s. Mm -hmm. You know, where's the show set? Where's the scene? You know, is it Silver Lake? Yeah. Um, so we have to dig a little deeper. And, you know, if somebody goes, why didn't you send my lounge queue? I'll go, well, it was an ultra lounge queue. It wasn't, a, you know, a Silver Lake bar queue. You know, and these are the judgments we have to make fast on a daily right. basis. And, but to and them, I mean it's a lounge queue, and it's in other. Li well, it wouldn't be in other libraries because you do exclusives. That but, is correct. Uh, we hear this from members all the time. It's like, why didn't you forward this? Because this is in other libraries, or it's been placed before. Just because something is good hip hop doesn't mean it's good hip hop for that pitch. It is true. Well, this is another reason. Uh, 
we both know the guy who designed my site. You know, it's one reason that I chose not to make available to the writers mm -hmm. the ability to see what is and isn't being pitched on a given basis per show because I didn't want to field those phone calls. It's like I have to make tough judgment calls all the time and yeah. fast. Um, and it's really, uh, it's not in uh, a diss on anybody because the only music I represent is good music because that's all I sign. Right. I refuse to sign anything that isn't stellar. And not only stellar, but has a high probability, which is somewhere on my list, but it isn't the bar set at this is stellar and I think that I can license this on a pretty frequent Absolutely. basis. Absolutely. It, it, it could be stellar, but sit on your shelf for 10 years. Why take the time to do the paperwork? That It doesn't do anybody any good. And the last thing I want is writers to go, this guy's just signing everything and he's not paying attention to it. And you know what, he's just filling his, his coffers with a bunch of music. It doesn't do me any good. Which it's a lot of libraries do. There are, yes, I'm not going to diss other libraries, right. but yes, absolutely. I, I'm not dissing the good ones. I, I, yeah. <laughs> no, it, it's true. And so if I don't send something of somebody's, it's never because it's not good. It's always because I have to weigh, and it isn't just me making these judgment calls, you know, of, we, it bounces around the office yeah. ba basing, based on the criteria of a particular show or a particular... What was going on in my office when you just arrived here? Three people were listening to music. Right. Yeah, four. Yeah, and then when I walked in, five. Yeah, so just so you guys know, this was a listing. Uh, it was for the president of a Nashville label that I got open entree with. And I had other people in the room with me listening to check me. Anyway, um, I'm watching what's going on. <laughs> oh no, no, don't do that. <laughs> They'll just confuse you. <laughs> um, There's a whole conversation going on here. Yeah, there always is. Uh, they'll talk about the weather. They'll talk about food. Uh, anyway, uh, they are paying attention to us. Though. Good. In the periphery, they're paying attention to us. Okay, so do not. Pa Here's another do not. Uh, another mistake. Do not badger publishers about payment. Yeah, I, you know, badgering publishers in any form is not well, really good, but yes. They don't see it as badgering. They see it as, can you tell me when I'm going to get the check, which I understand. I but. totally understand, too. Well, and this is another thing, because I have to do the same thing. Right. I said, my, oh. com my company is 50% collection agency, because <laughs> I, I, am, uh, I am chasing money like nobody's business. I mean, it's not that people are trying to stiff you. No, 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 no. It's just no. the time frame. No, it's it's a time frame. I mean, I have companies that I am nine months nine months out. Wow, and these are brand name companies that the folks watching. If I were to name the shows, your heads would spin. Yeah. And what's happening is, unfortunately, it's just a nature of what's going on in the industry now. You have so much consolidation. So this company buys this company, buys this company, buys this company. Next thing you know, it's conglomerate. And they don't staff up. They let everybody go. Right. So, you know, some companies that, again, would make your head spin if I were to say, you know, what was a body of offices doing licensing for the 20 shows that they may be uh, producing, there's two people mm -hmm. working on 20 shows. And that happens a lot. That's it's, not it's, like a once every three year event. That's no, more it's, like it's five everywhere. times a year. It's everywhere. Yeah. It's everywhere. So imagine big yeah. networks with three letters do that. Huge. Yeah. And so you can imagine the amount of music that is going on out there. So every show, especially shows that are p dropping, you know, ten and fifteen pieces of music in a show, mm -hmm. and there's say fifteen episodes, twenty episodes. Imagine the stack of paper for those licenses. And it isn't just yeah. it isn't just the libraries that are waiting, because I have friends that are major publishers. Right, they're waiting. We're yeah. all waiting. It's it's a crazy time out there. So I have to go after my money. You know, hey, you know, it's been sixty days. You know, hey, it's been ninety days. But the musician should be heartened by the fact that if they're working with the publisher, it's not just you that are waiting. The publisher doesn't like waiting. No, and I mean, so I, it's even if you were a greedy, not nice business person working in your own self-interest only, you would still be working in their self-interest by extension. 
he's not that kind of guy. But no, I mean it's the look. Most publishers, to my knowledge, are paying twice a year. Yeah, give or take. Um, we're trying to do it every couple of months because I'm a writer. I was a musician my entire life. You I know still it, are, Bob. I, well, thank you. <laughs> I, I, I know what it is to wait for money, and I, you know, I've said to you, you know, I have to float a year. I have to be able to financially float a year, meaning that I'm waiting. There's a show that is just starting up right now. Okay, what are we in? We're in May. Mm -hmm. I'm, I May. just got paid last month for last season. Uh, it went, this season, I just pitched to again. So the show ended last May. It was last, the was, show was it aired on? last summer. Okay. The show aired last summer. So nine months later. Yeah. Nine, ten months later, you there got you go. paid. Yes. And that's the sink fee. That is the sink fee. That doesn't count. The, there are the, times where I'm getting the sink fee after the performance. Wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's kind of new. I mean, it didn't well, used just, to be that it way. It didn't, no, it didn't used to be that way at all. But that's down from taking 15 people of a department, whittling it down to two. It's also changed in that in the old days, God, I sound like an old man, but in the old days, you got a confirm from a company. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to use this piece of music. This is, you know, the dough, blah, blah, blah. You get that confirm, that piece of music was in. Yeah. Now you get the confirm, these are the rights, this is the dub, but da, 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 money, and you agree. If it airs, we'll let you know. Wow. So that's why I stopped tweeting out oh. beforehand. Hey, this piece of music could be in the show. Make sure you watch it. Now I, you know, it Wait. could hit the cutting room floor the night before airing. And you know, yeah. I've had writers get pissed at me. Uh, sorry to use the language, but. Yeah, get pissed at me. <laughs> hey, man, I got my family over to watch the show, and my you piece of music... Say, it's a family show, but you could say pissed. My piece of music wasn't in there, you know, and I'm like, oh, hey, man. you know. <laughs> you the whole family sitting there eating buffalo chicken wings right? and pizza. Right, right. It's for like game day, and the right? song doesn't show. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, on to another mistake. Uh, I think we covered this one. Yeah, we did badgering libraries because you're not picking something up that, yeah. Okay, uh, mistake. Posting comments or complaints about a music library, a music supervisor, a person in the industry, or any related company on Facebook, Twitter, or the Taxi Forum, big mistake. I think pissed is common. <laughs> yeah, pissed is common. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, yeah. so... so Posting bad comments about anybody, yeah. in in my estimation, is extremely a faux pas. Um, you know, it's uh, I don't care if it's a supervisor, an editor, uh, uh, a music library, uh, taxi, um, uh, NBC, ABC, CBS. Once that gets posted, it's there forever. Even if you take it down, it could be cached overnight by Google. Who and, the heck knows? Yeah. And the point of the matter is is if someone were to see it, you know, like if I get a phone call, hey man, someone out there is dissing you. In fact, I called you once on something. He did. You know? He did, absolutely. Uh, and so, you know, it's like, uh, you know, I have a lot of friends in this business. I will get the phone call, hey, this cat's dissing you. Yep. Da, 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 da. You know, my my desire to work with that guy who's dissing me behind my back is probably going to wane a little bit. <laughs> a just, little. Just saying, you know, I'm, I may think twice before. I mean, you know, it's like, look, we all make judgment calls. We all we're all in this business to make a buck. That's, you know, it, it's art, but art meets commerce. Yeah. So we're there to hopefully make a buck, and you know, none of us is doing well. I'm not doing something to try and screw any of you cats. It's like, uh, look, if I have to pick a, a, a track that's going to go to a supervisor and it happens to not be yours, like I say, it's not for ill intent. It's because we have to make judgment calls quickly on, on a day-to-day -day basis. And I know you're going to ask how many times I'm pitching a day, but it's <laughs> insane. Will. It is insane. So. I mean, if you, if you, hey, look, if you get pissed at a company, don't work with them anymore. But I wouldn't go out and start posting about it. I've had stuff get sent to me where people even send it in a private email and somebody 
forwarded it to me mm. because they felt more of a not a relationship a, a stronger bond with taxi than with the person that sent them the email so they forwarded me the email said look sure. what this guy's saying behind your back said, well, yeah it, it, don't it, put it in writing uh, yeah. Any lawyer would tell you that. Never put anything in writing that you wouldn't want to have seen later. Yeah, it's it's just it's bad practice. It's, yeah. it's just not good practice. Uh, an unrelated thing. Uh, this weekend I saw a post on our forum about a music library that had gone out of business, or not gone out of business. Um, the, the guy sold to an investment group. Okay. So this was a guy who had run listings with Taxi for three or four years, very credible background. He himself had a ton of music, and you and I have seen this scenario a million times, well, at least 50 or 100, uh, <laughs> where somebody ha uh, has more work than they can handle. Okay. Um, and so they start their own library. Sure. And then the library outgrows their ability to service their writers or the industry well, because you can't be a musician and own a library without hiring other people. A lot of people get to that point, they don't want to hire somebody and it's start true. writing a check for, you know, whatever. 30 to whatever, yeah, a grand a year, and so their stuff starts to fall apart. So at that point, they go, I'll sell it. And they've, if, assuming they've got an exclusive catalog, they sell it, and... Although I've been seeing other things go on. Non-exclusive catalogs being sold. Really, that's interesting. Okay, well... Yeah, how does one do that? Because uh, it has no value, ostensibly, uh, right? In my estimation, it doesn't. Um, but it is generating income, but there's no... Well, that, that's a whole other, whole other subject. subject. Yeah. Yes. So, okay, so... As I wrote on our taxi forum, if the catalog was sold, whoever bought it, they didn't buy it to shelve it. They bought it to exploit the catalog. That is correct. Or flip it, one or the other. They're That's either going to upstream it to a universal or whoever, sure. or they're going to start exploiting it. So in my estimation, they're probably in better shape than they were with this one well-intentioned person who just grew his catalog bigger than he could handle because now you're liable to end up in a universal owned catalog or something that's got international distribution. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a yes and a no. I mean, uh, yes, larger distribution. But now you're going possibly from someone who knows his his 50 songs. Well, this was bigger than 50, but yeah. 100, whatever the size yeah. is. And, you know, so when you get that request, you go, oh, I know the perfect right. perfect song. When NBC Uni with... A couple hundred thousand? 500,000. Oh, oh in there. 500,000 tracks. They, they're yeah. not going to go, oh, track 473,000 right. Nobody is perfect. Have. Right. You know, so your metadata has got to be spot on when you're getting that big. Yeah. Oh my God, you want to talk searching for a lounge track, <laughs> right? Or or a happy pop. What kind of results do you think you're going to get with that? Oh, man, I just saw one of our competitors the other day that put something out that uh, put a couple of briefs out uh, from a film, and, and basically that's you know, it was like we need happy pop or rock or hip-hop or just any, anything happy we, and I'm like no wow yeah wow. anyway that's no darts at a wall yeah it wasn't even I don't even think the wall existed in this case okay uh, moving on to another mistake uh, trading or exchanging contacts or relationships with other musicians to gain access to companies so I'm in XYZ catalog you're in ABC catalog right and I go, you know what? I'll introduce you to that dude if you introduce me to that lady. Oh, so we're, we're, we're trading entree at these right. two places. When it becomes problematic is, let's say you do hip hop and I do new age. Sure. We're not competitive and we're trading relationship. Um, we've both seen situations where Somebody has made somebody's referred somebody else's music to you, and you listen to it and go, "Not that good. Mm -hmm. I can't use it." Yes. You once quoted me a number said ninety percent of what I listened to. I asked you where you found music other than Taxi, and you said, "Well, you know, a lot of it's referred to me by the people who work with me." It's that. And, and but ninety percent, and you didn't say it was bad. You just said you couldn't use it, which means again we're talking about that 
quantitative thing more than a qualitative. It, I mean, the quality is a given. It's got to be there. So you may be hearing music that's really good, but it, it's not right for TV or film. So therefore, it has no value for you. Right. So you've wasted your time on what, on their part, was a good referral. You know what I mean? It, sure. It, they weren't referring somebody who they know is an idiot. Where I see it being even more problematic is the geometric tree that comes after it, which is even though I'm doing new age and you're doing hip hop and we're not competitive and we've traded licks or libraries as it were, eventually the people that we refer, or in our case, the referrers are going to refer other referrers and, and it becomes a geometric thing and pretty soon... It does happen. Yeah, it you see where a catalog had 22 hip hop things now has 122 possibly because of a door you opened. Yeah, well, so... I know, that, that was like a multi-layered question. It is a multi-layered question, you know, because there are certain people, and not, you know, I could rattle the names off, where if somebody goes, this person was a referral, yeah. I know that person, and I know the level of work that they do, I'm many times more apt to listen. Right, because... They know where the bar is. They know where the bar is, so that... That's not really a faux pas. And if it happens to be from a hip hop guy and it's new age, I'm, I'm first I'm gonna scratch my head and go, huh? I would have assumed it was hip hop, you know. And then it, it's new age, and I go, well, okay. And then I, yeah, I think about, well, how much new age is going across my plate? The other thing that I'm very uh, uh, conscious of is the fact that my contract is exclusive. So being that, and also being a writer. I know what that means. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, you're getting married. You know, yeah. it's till death do us part. So I, you know, so I don't take it lightly. And if it's a piece of music, like you were saying, if it's like some killer, you know, uh, something, but it's, I may see a request for it once every three years. Yeah. The way I deal with those people is I'll say, well, thank you for the referral. I just need to let you know this particular style of music I may only see a request once in a blue moon. If you want to roll the dice with me, if it's a good piece of music, right? If it's quality, I will be honest with them and just go, "Look, you know, I rarely see requests for this." That being said, I think it sounds great. If you want to put it in the catalog, we'll roll the dice. I said, but I would, you know, if they send me ten pieces of music, what I will t say to them is, "Why don't we just work with a couple? If you want to roll the dice, why don't we work with a couple? Take the other eight and go out to other publishers. And are those people generally patient when they roll the dice with a couple? Or do they get antsy like six months later, uh, fo following up in quotes? You know, no, How actually... How come nothing's I, happened or are they actually, pretty patient? No, actually, you know, we've ha we've talked about a few of the writers that have been problematic and they ended up getting fired. Um, you know, it, it, no, for the most part, people have been pretty cool. People will follow up. People mm -hmm. will go, hey, is there anything happening? Hey, look, if you reach You'd out... You'd be the first to know. Well, well, yeah, exactly. And, um, I mean, there, there is an assumption, and I, I get it. There's an assumption out there that the music's being worked. And let me tell you, the music's being worked. Um, and, and, you know, to get on the phone and, you know, sometimes I try and, you know, if I have a moment, I'll go, hey, just want to let you know this song of yours went off to A, B, C, and D. Fingers crossed, you know just because I know people like to know their stuff's being worked. Right. Um, it's It takes time to do that. If I were to, I don't know if how I were, you find the time, honestly. Well, no. if I were to learn, the amount of music that goes out of my place on a given day would make your head spin. It's it will, And then when you got a show that reaches out to you and they want an entire season's yeah. worth of music. Hey, we've got this character, this character, this character, this character, this character listens to this, this character's into jazz, this character's into this. Oh, and we also have this uh, club that is a reoccurring uh, thing, and we're looking for, you know, X, Y, and Z to be playing in that club. So send us everything you got. Yeah. Great. Well, it is great because, you know, that, you know, there are certain shows, and I go, man, okay, at the end of the season, I'm looking at, you know, 20, 25 placements. I'm going, yeah, bring on those shows. But if there's two or three of those shows on a given day. Right, it's a lot of scrambling. That's a lot of scrambling, especially if it's, okay, we need the, the jazz, we need the lounge, we need the, the black keys, we need uh, miles, we need uh, whatever the heck it is. Yeah. 
Oh, and there's a massage parlor, so we, we need uh, new age music, you know, or whatever. You know, it's it's and there's a hip hop club. You Thai, know, Thai music. It's <laughs> it's 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 it yeah. that takes time, and so you have to go through your catalog. I mean, we know our catalog very well, and what's what is great about my website is on the back end, which only we have access to. There are certain things that are requested that we've done that pitch. 20 times. Right. I can actually grab those pieces of music that we've done the, the heavy lifting, putting them together, go through that, bring that folder over, and then we can go, you know, for this particular show, this one may not be right, this one may not be right, this one may be right. I mean, today I got a request from a, a very huge music supervisor, um, and he needed, he needed, I, what kind of Irish music do you have? Oh, don't let me forget. Before you leave here, okay. I got to play you some Irish folk that'll knock. Oh, you fantastic! Off. Fantastic. Well, okay. So yeah. what? What? So I, I shot email right back to him. Well, you know, I've got quite a bit of traditional. I've got you know some, uh, you know, Irish rock. You know, you know, what are you looking for? And what is this for? Yeah. So he gets back to me very quickly. For this show, we don't know what we need. Send us everything you got. And I'm just going. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. So, you know, because I've got Gaelic vocal, I've got English vocal over Irish, I've got uh, Irish bagpipes, I've got, um, you know, the list goes on. Yeah. Needless to say, it was a big pitch. It took time. So when those happen, and they're happening like three and four times in a given, yeah, yeah. you're scrambling. You're scrambling. Wow. Okay, next mistake. Uh, do... N do not submit any music without having the writer splits resolved in oh, advance. Oh, please, so yes, please. We see this problem between Taxi and you when we put out a listing, and the listing says make sure that you own and control all rights. Right. Very specifically, it says exclusive at least twice in the listing. We forward something to Bob. He likes it. He reaches out, and the member says... Any number of things. It could be, oh... Um, my co-writer doesn't want to do an exclusive deal. Oh, my co-writer is signed to a major publishing deal. Oh, um, my co-writer, I can't find them. Um, you name it, it has happened. Or, oh, we haven't really... Oh, my co-writer isn't registered with a PRO. I mean, there's been numerous of those. Yeah. Um, which, I mean, it's all resolvable, but it just makes the flow... In the context of the days that you have... It just it slows things up. I think sometimes people think that, like Taxi has, you know, multiple floors in a high-rise office building, and we have a staff of a hundred, or that you Don't might. Don't you? Have, no, we do not. <laughs> uh, I, somebody said on our web or on our Facebook page, it's a family-owned business. It is. We are a mom-and-pop company with ten people under the roof. Right. It, it, it's. Yeah. So, well, the the point though is is really the more writers. Uh, have their P's and Q's together. Now, I'm, from what I understand, uh, with a lot of my competition, I think I'm a little more lenient than most. Um, I will let people get their, especially if I like a song, I'm gonna let people get their co-writers shit together. Um, now, that's not cool. You can say piss. Sorry. <laughs> that is one of the seven words, right? <laughs> Are we on TV? Oh, my God. Well, you call this TV. Oh, my God. We just had this conversation this morning about the word balls. Could that be used in a song? And I was like, you know, had him by the balls. <laughs> and I was like, is that, does, that, does that equate to explicit? We were having this conversation. I was like, oh, my God. Uh, does it? <laughs> I, don't, I, I decided, I don't I decided it didn't. Uh, hey, there's a commercial um, for the uh, thing that puts air in your tires. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and, ah! it, and it talks about you don't want to have flat balls. Really? It says that in the commercial. Well, there, I'm, I'm free. You I'm free are. free and clear. So what, I forgot. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, not having that... You run a listing, we forward you music, even though we are explicit in saying you need to own and control the master and the copyright. Right. Um, and that it's an exclusive library, and I get calls from you going, Michael, well, I reached I out. I, I try and be very... No, I mean, you... Because I'll bug you, too. No, you don't, bug you, you don't ream me about it, but, you know, you're frustrated, and you should be. I right. Mean, you know, right. you're just letting me know so that we can try and avert it on our end, and we do our best, but... 
Which is why we're doing the show. Right, to, exactly why we're doing the show. So, you know, the other thing, and I've kind of mentioned this to you and you guys, one thing that I would highly recommend is if you are co-writing songs that you are submitting, not just to me, but to anybody, I would let Taxi know, hey, it's, it's me and I have two co-writers and here they are. Meaning so that when you guys, because what I get nine times out of ten, the 99 out of 100, I don't think I've ever seen two names. Well, they don't come to you because we just give you the member's name and contact. Which is fine. Um, because, but in, when the members submit, it says writer, co-writer. Okay, so, so but, you do get that data. Okay. Yeah, but mm -hmm. we just want to, when we forward stuff to people in the industry, we don't want to confuse the matter because if you were to reach out to the co-writer, and we don't have the co-writers contact information sure. the, the writer you know all taxi memberships are writer based got it so we have one person that's a central point of contact we've got a phone number we've got an email that's what we send you if it had bob jones and susie smith um then we by right should give you susie smith's information as well but she may not know that bob jones submitted it right and that's and that is actually peeling the onion back, that's going to be the more important thing to talk about, which is whatever you guys are submitting, just make sure you've talked to your co-writers and you go, I'm submitting to an exclusive catalog or right. I'm, ex I'm submitting to a non-exclusive catalog. And tell me, what is exclusive? Well, you then know, they're going to get into that conversation. We, and that's good though. Yeah. And you know, there are, you know, I've had writers call me up and go, well, you know, I wrote the lyric, they wrote the bridge, they don't even know how to split the song up. <laughs> and I, you know, I'm like, well, uh, I could give you an answer, but really, it's about you guys talking to each other, and you decide. I said, look, the way I co-write with people is if I if I am in a room with somebody, we're right. fifty fifty. It's not, yeah, you wrote the the horn line to the bridge, <laughs> and I'm going to get five percent. It's just, I don't know. That's just how I work. I think a lot of people work that way. Well. And a lot of don't. Yeah. Just letting you know. So okay. you guys want to work that out before you and make those decisions and have it clear, so that when the publisher hears it, because Taxi has forwarded it, and you go, "Hey, I want to put this song in the catalog," you have that all squared away. What are we seeing? Uh, I'm just looking to make sure that the uh, we've had a lot of problems with Ustream lately with the streams buffering. Um, it went away for a while, now it's back. The, the co-writers that have releases, that's fantastic. I love it when people get that together. And not only that, but uh, if you guys are songwriters, really smart if you're having somebody sing your song, get a performer's release from them. If it's a work for hire, you're paying yep. these people, get a performer's release. Um, I've had some people come to me, and next thing I know, I find out it's a union singer. And I mean, not that I'm dissing the union, just the no, but, you find no, out. No, but you can't, you, can't, yeah. you can't put a union singer, at least their name can be nowhere near well, an artist list. And they probably got paid demo scale, and now it's going to be, yeah, there, there's that issue. In Nashville, people go there and they get demos done. If they're paid on card at the demo rate and then stuff gets to a library publisher and it ends up in a TV show, but the people playing on it only got paid the demo rate, that's a problem. Well, I do have union musicians and singers. and I mean, they work for me. So, uh, But they, nine times out of ten, will be doing it under a pseudonym. I... I, I I wish the union could find a way to work with the film and TV community in a in a way that worked for both sides better. That you, would be you sweet. will be wishing for a while, I think. I think I might be, but I just <laughs> I wish that could happen. I, right, that's a whole other show. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, when here's another mistake. When you reach out to our members, let's say we forward some people to you, um, any of the writers or any of the writers in your catalog, you ask somebody to send you music and they send you an MP3 attachment or a folder full of MP3s or a bunch of WAV files attached to an email. How much do you love that? Well, I, I am currently trying to... W I think my inbox is about 28 gigs. Wow. Okay, it'll take that. I am I am deleting so many MP3s, it would blow your mind. Wave files really suck up juice. Oh, um, now, look, you know, if someone writes, 
you know, if I call a writer and I go, look, I need this fast. This is for uh, an ad or this is for a promo thing. I need this like two hours. Yeah. And a writer does it and he knows it's a 15 second, 30 second piece of music, you know, that, and he sends me a WAV file. Yeah. I'm cool with that because he knows I'm under the gun. I just pull that WAV file out of the email, delete the email, we're on, we're off. And that, that piece of music's off in the promo producer's hands. I'm talking about the situation where we forward... Yeah, that drives me nuts. Yeah. <laughs> Betty Johnson to you. Right. And you reach out to Betty and say, I just got your stuff from Taxi. I really, really like it. Right. Do you have any other stuff I might be interested right. in, in that genre or any genre, right. whatever the conversation is. And Betty... and. and you go to the men's room and come back, and there's 16 emails in your box, each one with a different MP3 attached to it. We've that all is had that, moment, that is right? that is absolutely <laughs> happened. Yeah, please, 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 don't do that. Um, <laughs> because it's just a series of click, 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 click. And again, I try and be, I understand. Magnanimous. I tr yeah, I try yes. and be nice, but it, it is a lot. You know what I would say is, and and some of the some of that happens with. You know, dare I say, you know, some some of the older cats that just that's kind of their function. Yeah. You know, technology isn't on the top of their food. You know, they're not quite there yet. But the best the best way to do this is to create a folder on your. Hopefully, you guys are well. I'm a Mac lover, so hopefully you guys are on Macs. Create a folder on your desktop. Put your name on the folder before you send it. Right. I am getting folders that say Black Toast Music. I'll download the folder. I won't be able to get to it for three days. Right. I'll go back to my download folder, open it up. I'll go Black Toast Music. I'll click on it. I may even, I may, and inside the folder may be 10 pieces of music. I may start listening to that piece of music and I go, wow, this is really great. I'll do an Apple Eye on it to get information. Zero metadata. Yep. Like, no. So I've got this folder with music I'm loving. And I have no clue where it came from. Because, you know, we get busy. Three days later, I'm listening to it. Sometimes my best listening is on the weekends. I never stop working. Because the two of us. You know, well, yeah. it's because the phones aren't ringing. I'm yeah. not responding to a bazillion. I even come into the office on weekends to get away from my family so I have peace and quiet. It's only quiet time. It's sad, but it's true. Right. Or late at night, or, you know, I mean, it's, you know, yeah, there's a lot. But so the best, and I would say also, I get pitches with upwards of 20 SoundCloud links. Mm -hmm. It's like, look, if you're going to send it SoundCloud, and I'm not the biggest fan of SoundCloud, but if you're going to send it SoundCloud, do me a favor, make one link, put the 10 pieces of music that you're trying to sh in on, that on one a, link, right. a custom link for me. Yeah. Just take that extra step and do that. I do that for my clients, you know, other than click SoundCloud open. Click SoundCloud open. Click the other problem with SoundCloud I'm finding is it 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 filters, meaning it, it like it it'll you may start and it may start to play and then it'll skip skip you know you can't it doesn't always I haven't had that oh my god it's terrible really it's terrible you mean like buffering buffering yeah okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I I I would say generally if I've got um, SoundCloud buffering it's because my browser isn't the latest greatest update or something like that or I've got some newsy thing you know you know those like you click on a news link about you know somebody some horrible thing happening you click on it and there's video and the video is buffering and then that slows down the rest of your thing you go oh, screw it and you think you've closed the window but it's in the background Ooh. and now you're moving on to SoundCloud oh yeah and now oh. the whole thing just locks up and I've got a lot of memory in my laptop and I still get that problem well the other thing about SoundCloud for me that's a little bit of uh, problematic and I don't mean to diss SoundCloud um, but so I get an email and from a writer I may or may not know. Mm -hmm. Usually I don't know. And I will open the SoundCloud and I may even like this music. And I go, I gotta come back to it. I may even like this music. Uh, right? okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> then but I go, oh, okay. And then I have to move on through my emails because I've got to keep moving. Yeah. You know? And I've got requests coming and I'm, my attention gets pulled in a, a million, and I'm going, I, I like this music. The problem is, uh -huh. is if it's two days later I go, I remember liking something. How did I get there? Where did, where, who was this? 
you know. Whereas if I get a folder via WeTransfer or Hightail or something along those lines with your name on it, yeah, and I download it, if I get to it three days later, a week later, two weeks later, I go, oh, this is Ben, whatever, you yeah. know, click, click, click. Ben, you're great, fantastic. I can reach back out. I can find your email because I got your name. Mm -hmm. But if I get a, a an email with a SoundCloud link, I have to remember every aspect of that email. I over this past weekend, I was listening to stuff on SoundCloud, uh, and I created a Michael playlist for the month of May, twenty seventeen. Okay. okay. So at least I can go back. But then I have to remember: was that in May or was that in April? Well, if you created it, hopefully, you know, it'll be simpler to find, you know. Or, or Not you, always. Or if you yeah. titled it Michael's Playlist, you could do the little search up in the, the right, search box then, and find it. Right, but then I have to remember, because I could have a playlist for March, April, May, sure. June. You know, at some point, I'm going to have a lot of playlists. Sure. So, yeah, it, it's... Oh, well. These Stalking. should be the biggest mistakes we ever have, Bob. Right. No, I got you. Um, okay. Uh, next mistake. Trying to stay on track. I've got a lot of these suckers. Composers and writers not responding when you've contacted them. So we forward you music, and you hear something or somebody that you like, and you shoot them an email, and they just don't respond to you. And then Bob and many other library owners will say, are you sure you gave me the right contact information for XYZ? And I correct. reach out to XYZ and say, hey, XYZ. Little Susie Smith, uh, I've got Bob trying to get a hold of you. I was afraid to respond. Oh, I don't know about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I get this one many times a year, like half a dozen or more times a year. I was afraid to respond. Why? Because I was just afraid I was going to get screwed. Oh. Because people are trained from birth, apparently. Musicians are trained that you will get screwed by every person in the music industry. So now, in their mind, you're in a high-rise with 100 people around you, and you're this ogre smoking a cigar with gold and platinum records on the wall behind you going, ah time to rip off another musician. Got it. And they're afraid to reach out to you, and your frustration is like... Well, I the frustration is, is well, I can't wrap my brain around that because I go, well, this person... Submitted. submitted. Yeah. They paid the, the dough. They submitted to Taxi. Taxi went through the, the, the process of reviewing yeah. it. It actually made it through the channels with you guys to get passed on to me. So there's this whole mechanics that happened before it gets to me. Yeah. Then I get it, listen through it, and believe me, if I like it, it's going through some mechanics. Yeah. Um, and then if I'm reaching out, so basically what I'm saying is, is it's a process. That's a lot of work to start happening only to just not be available if what you're theoretically hoping is going to happen Yeah, happens. the thing you've been waiting for. So I don't understand it, um, but it, you know what? For me it happens, I can't tell you how often. I'll get something from you, yeah. I'll reach out to the people, and it's crickets. Crickets, crickets, crickets. I just don't know what to say. The only good thing that comes from that is it gives you and I an excuse to say hi. That is true. That <laughs> That's is true. the only good and thing. And you know what? It's gotten to a point where I won't just shoot one time across the bow. If I really like something, I'll, hey, you know, shot yeah. you an email last week in regard, really love your song, blah, blah, uh. blah. Just wanted to, you know, just let me know, yes or no. Oh. Uh. You know, so, um, and That's... then I think, you know, there have been times where I'll go to that third, third try and then it's just like, yeah, you know, you win. I'm so sorry. Ah, it's okay. It's okay. It's part of the biz. Well, okay. It's part of the biz. That's um, why I make the big bucks. <laughs> I'm trying to understand my own question. Uh, okay, what's I'm the trying to pay attention to what's going on here. Oh, There's so much food going on. I know. And liquor. They talk a lot about liquor. Well, I'm down for that. Let's I, let's I, get I, a drink going. What's, okay. I see. I see the rock star. You're supporting. <laughs> I am. <laughs> well, they sponsor the road rally. I know so they do. I try and give them the love back. I think that's good. Um, okay, Bob, what's the biggest mistake regarding samples? You know, I saw, I, I, I know you've asked me that, and I know um, there's a, a few people that are really worried about that. Um, I will tell you 
That is not a problem for me. Um, really? Not, yeah, I mean, it's really, really funny. You're um, not afraid of having an illegal sample? Or sure, I, absolutely. Oh, okay, then absolutely. why is it not a problem? Well, because I don't, for some reason, seem to be getting uh, that kind of material sent my way. Um, whether people just know not to, um, I am unsure. Listen, I've been listening to music my entire life. If I hear Stevie Wonder in the background, or if I hear you know <laughs> uh, uh, something else, I'm going to go oh, or a, a horn lick ripped from X, Y, or Z, or a, a orchestral right. thing. At that point, I'll reach out to the writer and go, hey, where did you pull that from? If I don't know, um, there are times. You know, my assistant's got great ears. He he's turned to me and gone, Bob, that's from blah blah. blah. I'm like, really? And they go, yeah, check it out. Blah, blah. And I'll go, Whoop, out. You know, so we're we listen. I mean, we don't just yeah. like breeze through. But you through can't stuff. know everything. That—that's the scary part. Is that somebody could have a snare drum that they ripped from somebody's record. Yes. Okay. So, and I've had this conversation with people. Um, at that point, truthfully, your, your, your border. You're just border. This is where I have to trust my writers. Um, they trust me. Yeah. I have to trust them with some things. Truth of the matter is, is everybody knows what's legal and illegal. Not everybody, but well, I mean, at a the certain smart ones do. At a certain point, I mean, look, uh, there are certain things where you know it's going to be more obvious than not. A snare drum. Someone samples a, a kick drum. I mean, on TV. Even in film, I mean, yeah. who's going to go? Oh, that was Bonham's kick drum from Zeppelin <laughs> too. I mean, maybe. I'd hate to have to argue in court to, to pay to argue in court that it wasn't, which is. But well, yeah. can you imagine in court? So they're going to play it for some musicologist, and so, so it's not going to be a, well, a now matter they're of. Gonna, they're going to look at a waveform, aren't they? <laughs> I don't know. I've never <laughs> seen that happen, but. Uh, I know some people are really funny about that, and I know certain people will ask the question when, in a submission form, when people are submitting music, does this contain samples? Right. Well, okay. So what if the person goes, well, I'm not going to say anything. No. Yeah. I so think that happens a lot. Well, so they say no. You're covered. Uh, are you? Well, you'd be named, but you're covered. So, yeah. So you'll go, you still go through the lawsuit. Yeah. You'll go through the lawsuit. And you'll go, well, this writer indemnified me. Mm -hmm. Okay? But you're still going through the lawsuit. And nine times out of ten to make lawsuits go away, what do you do? Settle. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you pick your battles. Like I say, if it's so obvious that I'm going, oh, that's the, you know, that's from Tchaikovsky's whatever, and, <laughs> you know, and the bridge, and you can't do that. I mean, or that's from Nutcracker Suite, or that's from, like I say, Stevie Wonder or something, I go, no way. What about people who use their own name as a sample um, in a hip hop thing? Oh, uh, I get that. You run a lot. into that? Yes, I get that a lot. Um, that and that's usually on a SoundCloud link. I don't know why. It just <laughs> so, is it a requisite? Sign up for SoundCloud. I make sure you've got your know. name. That this is so and so the rapper. Yeah, and it it tends to be urban music, no yeah. doubt about it. Um, yeah, I don't know why people do that. I mean, I get they don't want their stuff ripped off, but... Um, is that why they're doing it? It's I think like, so. Like when libraries, you know, put in a, an audio cue every 30 seconds, this is such and such a library. Oh, God. Well... You, you uh, haven't heard that? No. Well, no. No, I have You haven't. know, the, the really cheesy royalty-free libraries, not that... Sure. The, that's a whole other discussion, but... The, the cheesier the library, I find the higher probability, the probability is that they're going to have the, this is XYZ library. That would, as an end user, that would drive me bonkers. Yeah. How are you supposed to get into a piece of music when it's, this is well, a toast music, thank you for life. <laughs> I think that the people who use those libraries aren't all that sophisticated. But, well, you know what it brings up a huge P for me with websites? Yeah. When you get shot to a website, you, you click to the website, and the first thing that happens is music starts playing. Oh, yeah. I'm like, no. No. Who does that? People do it. It's it's such a peeve. It's like, well, what if I don't like that piece of music? I don't like your website. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Or you can't figure out how to turn it off quickly. That enough, too. Right? Yeah. That too. Uh, the I can do everything mistake. Um, mm. Yes. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna. I think. 
Uh, we will do some Q and A. I guess we have to pick up the pace though, because I still have a bunch of questions. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I call it the V word problem. Uh, I was giving a speech in like Dallas or Chicago or New York, some big city, and I had a ballroom full of people, and I said, "Don't use the V word." Does anybody know what the V word is? And this young kid stood up on a chair in the very back row of the room and screamed out a female body part. For the V word. Okay. Everybody in the ballroom is hilarious. <laughs> just dying. I was like, oh my gosh. The word I was looking for was versatile. Right. Because people's reflex is like, hey, check me out. I can do rock. I can do pop. I can do hip hop. Blah, 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 blah. It is true. And what kind of response does that get from you? Or is that a mistake? Well, uh, a I'm person who would do that with me nine times out of ten would be someone I've never worked with before. Right. So it's a brand new contact. So imagine, I'm getting bombarded by writers. Like, with Taxi, I put out a listing. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking for the music. Right. I'm getting bombarded from around the world. And don't do it after watching this show, because you're going to... I, I mean, I'm, I'm saying from Europe, China, Russia, you name it, I'm every day. People are, and it's it's fantastic because on some level you're going, wow, this is great. I guess the word's out. I, I'm, I'm doing something right. Yeah. Um, but, you know, so if I've got all these people and I'm, I'm very about getting back to people as best as I can. I, I do, it does fall through the cracks from time to time. Yeah. But I'm very about getting back to everybody. Um, but if, if you're one person out of 25 today, that want me to listen to their music, and then I open your link, and you go, I'm versatile, and I go, well, versatility's great. Open it up, and it, it's all those things you describe. Like, there's this folder, this folder, this folder, this, and at the end, and wow, I'm you, looking. you got folders, that's impressive. Yeah. Well, if, if <laughs> there are folders, right? And I'll go, oh my God. Well, if they're folders, and it was a download, I can go back at a later date. Right. But there are times where it's it, it's SoundCloud links, and it's daunting. It's like, uh, how am I going to get through all this? And I've got 25 other people I'm trying to get back to. And isn't your, well, at least my experience, and I'm sure yours can't be that different, is generally the people that wave the versatile flag usually aren't that good at any one thing. And that's what they should be doing, is figuring out what they do best and pitch you that to build the relation, start and build the relationship rather than sending you a bunch of C+. Plus across the board that is correct although uh, because they don't know me yeah I, I understand them doing it because there are catalogs out there that would just swallow it all up right barely listening to anything they'll just go yes and, and then they're, they're gonna put their little voice over on top of the music going right back to that scenario exactly again. this is XYZ library every 30 seconds yeah for, you know as far as for me and I can only speak for myself I would say pitch what you do best. If you're a guitarist, an acoustic guitarist, whatever it is, if you're a, uh, 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 if you write jazz, whatever that is, you're a sax player, whatever that is, yeah, send, send me what you do best because that's the, at that point then I go, wow, this is really great. What else do you have? Yeah. You know, well, are you interested in hip hop? I also do hip hop. And I'll go, really? Okay, let me hear a few of your things. And I'll go, you know, it's not really right for my clients. Or I'll go, holy cow, you're versatile. Those are few and far between. It, it does happen. I mean, there are certain writers, which I could rattle them off, taxi writers, that I know I'm going to this guy for this if I need it. Matt Vanderbilt, for instance. Matt is great at country. I'm kidding. I'm joking. <laughs> I've never seen that side of him, so I don't know. Matt was telling us that when he started out with Taxi, he wanted to be the next big country writer, and it didn't take him long to figure out he was not going to be the next big country writer, and that's when the God. he had the, the film TV cue realization moment. That's funny. Yeah, so I'm kidding, Matt. I am kidding. <laughs> uh, sending emails, uh, the mass emails of... Uh, I know you've got to get these, I get them, where somebody just buys a directory and they type in oh, a yeah. bunch of names and they don't even bother to BCC. And so the good news is there's always somebody on that list whose email address you wanted <laughs> and you can get it. Right. But they send it out with like 50 email addresses pasted in there, check me out. Right. 
with a link to right. their SoundCloud. Yes. And, and what's your gut reaction when you see that? Well, yeah, my first gut reaction is, is oh, look, they're in touch with that. Oh, I was wondering what that email was. But, well, <laughs> right? And then, exactly. and then, no, really, what I would encourage as far as, look, I'm all about diversification. You know, people should be not have all their eggs in one basket. I'm a big advocate of that. And I've been saying that to... The first writers I was signing from Taxi. Yeah, you and I both agree. I mean, all I, libraries don't do all things well. Exactly. Pick and, and choose your battles. Well, and some libraries have connections over here that I may not have. I may have connections that they don't have. Right. I mean, any number of things. And I've always been an advocate for that. But if you're going to pitch to 20 libraries or publishers, don't put all those <laughs> in an open email box where a publisher can see it. And then... Just go, hi, I'm the greatest thing since sliced bread. Listen to me now. I would encourage everybody. How many emails did I send out this morning? 180. Every one of them was personalized. I took hours typing all of those. If you're sending out to 20 libraries, personalize it. Find out who you're sending it to. Put their name. Hi, Bob. I found out about you from X, Y, and Z. Thought we might be a good fit. Ooh, that's another mistake, though. We have people that are either current or former taxi members that will say, I found out about you from taxi. Oh, when they interesting. When they only found out, like they're part of a Facebook group with other taxi members, ah. or they're in some sort of... It's very devious. <laughs> yeah, it, it is, and it tarnishes our reputation because they feel like I'm going to get more entree if I say that I got your contact information from taxi. It's true. Uh, so because I will, I will most likely open it. Right, it, but it ruins our reputation when the person on the receiving end opens it up, and this person either acts unprofessionally or sends really bad music. And the truth of the matter is. They only peripherally, I can never say that word, but you know what I'm saying, marginally, right. peripherally, um, had anything to do with taxi. or sure. You know, it's not like I said, oh, here's Bob's personal email address. Send him over the stuff and tell him I sent you. Right. I, I will do that twice well, a year, maybe. Well, that kind of stuff, that kind of stuff is, what it will do to a writer over time is tarnish their name in the community. Because if I find that out, or if any publisher finds that out, right. I don't want to say blacklisting, but you know, it just it's like, you know, I have a folder. It's just trouble writers. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know there's going to be a problem. For whatever reason, it could just be a personality issue. You know, some people are so um, they're so excited. They're so, uh, and and I get it, but it's like, you know, <laughs> you know, I can't talk to you every day. I mean, right. you know, I mean, there are certain writers I do talk to almost every day because I've got so much going on and they're involved. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of, there are certain things that are important to do, but there's other people that are just, hey, well, I know you didn't take the last three of mine. Here's another three. Mm -hmm. I know you didn't take the last three of mine. Here's another three. I know you didn't take the last three of mine. Here's another three. And, and it's not getting any better. Right. And I'm trying to make comments to help it be better. And it's not getting any better. And that, you know, yeah, that's not helpful. And eventually it becomes problem writer. You know, let's talk about the blacklist. Um, people have, there, there was a music library owner that once proclaimed that there is a blacklist. And I said, no, there, there is no official blacklist. But we talk, we have friends in the industry, we all talk. and there are people whose names will come up in conversation and the vibe in the room is like, ooh, there's, it's not like we circulate a black list or there's a centralized database of don't work with these people, but I think everybody has their, only li their own little list of problematic people. It is very true. It is very true. And, you know, look, I have lunches with my competition. I have lunches with other major publishers and things are discussed. Mm -hmm. And it'll be, oh, you've run into this person? Oh, yeah, well, I've run into that person. Yeah, well, we don't deal with them. Well, we don't deal with them. And it just perpetuates. And so, you, yeah, have, you know, try and be as professional as possible. I mean, it is the music business. 
you know. So it's it's about being businesslike. It's you can be super talented on a musical level and be untalented on the business side. Well, we've it, talked about one writer who yes. shall remain nameless, <laughs> and that was actually the case. Yeah, it was someone you referred me to. Yep, and this cat was super talented. Yeah, but it got to the point, and I signed easily 10, 15, maybe even 20 pieces of music from this person. And that was me picking up the phone and calling you saying, yeah. you need to know about this person. Yeah, personally. Yeah. yeah. It, it, so I was putting my reputation on the line. I was pretty deflated when you said to me, you know, problematic. And I felt bad, but I also know you... You know me well enough to know that I couldn't have known that going in or I never Absolutely. would have made the referral, but still, it's... The problem, and the problem was, just so you guys all know, it was just um, a constant, it was many of these mistakes we're discussing. Mm -hmm. You know, did you send this song? Uh, did, <laughs> did, you know, did we get paid? Da 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 Is it, You know, on and on and on. It was, it got to the point of borderline badgering, you wow. know, and what was awful was I like this person's music. Mm -hmm. The stuff was good. Absolutely. And so what did I end up doing? I think within, certainly within 60 days, 30 days, 60 days, I fired him. Mm -hmm. I said, you know what? Can't deal with you anymore. And I did something I don't do. I reverted it all back to him. Wow. All of it. Bye. I didn't want any of it in my catalog. And then there was that banner you hung up over the 101. Oh my God, right. <laughs> I'm kidding. I am kidding. He didn't do that. And then, and then, go figure, I got one of his pieces placed after <laughs> I let it all go, and I ended up paying the guy, and the guy made money off of me, and, you know, it's like, if he had stayed, you know, just stayed cool, we would have done good business together, no yeah. doubt about it, unfortunately. And that was, you know, it would be turning placements within 30, 60 days for a rider. I mean, anyway. All right. Uh, submitting your music to a taxi listing for an exclusive publisher if you're looking for a licensing agency or a non-exclusive deal. Yeah. Does that piss you off? In a big way. Okay. In a big way. Well, because it just wastes time. Yeah. You know, because I'm listening to all this music. So read the taxi listings. If it says it's for an exclusive catalog, know what that means yeah and and if you don't want to do business with an exclusive catalog that's fine but just don't submit right do they think it's magically going to turn into non-exclusive when you hear their music <laughs> here's my here's my philosophy on that what i think is possibly this is me giving the benefit of the doubt well when he hears my song <laughs> It'll be so good right. that he'll do a, a non-exclusive. That's thing. what I'm talking about. I, <laughs> yeah, exactly I, I, what I'm talking I think, about. I think that's kind of the mindset. The thing is, is look, you know, uh, we do business how we do business. Yeah. We've always done business the way we do business. It's been working for 20, 27 years. I'm not going to change the way I'm doing business. And the fact that we're exclusive, there's there's many reasons for it. One of which is it keeps that bar really high. Meaning that if you're going to jump over that bar, you know we're playing serious, right? Yeah. Non-exclusives, a lot less serious. Yeah. Right? Uh, and there are various levels within the non-exclusive. That is correct. Range. That is correct. Uh, you and I both know some quality non-exclusive people, but there are a lot more that may not be. So if I set that, that means someone knows we're playing for keeps. Mm -hmm. And that keeps, I think, a lot of the chafe. Mm -hmm away from Black Toast music, which is what I want to do. I only want people that are dead serious about doing business and good business with really good material. So, uh, How about the situation, uh, the mistake of you hear something that we forward you, you reach out to that person and they say, let me run it by my lawyer and they hand it off to somebody who went uh, is a real estate attorney in Ohio, not exactly a music capital per se, mm -hmm. and this person took a music law course or two during law school, sure. and they love music. Um, and they look at the contract and go, OMG, I would never give 100% of my publishing to anybody because sure. they read a book once, sure, 35 years ago, that said, don't give up 100% of your publishing, and they know nothing about the norms or mores of our world where people routinely do. Sure. 
how do you deal with that? That that's a mistake. Well, right? well, I mean, you know, not a mistake to reach out to a lawyer. Maybe a mistake to reach out to that lawyer. Well, you know, these are choices, and these are the, I can't control what people do. Look, if somebody goes, oh yeah, that sounds great, send me your contract, and I send the contract, and they, and I want people to have attorneys to review it because truthfully, I want writers to know what they're doing. Oh yeah, you don't want to come back and like I had no idea. No, no, yeah. no, no. My look, I don't. I'm not 27 years in business because I'm I'm pissing off writers or ripping off or writers. ripping off writers yeah. or pissing off my client or that that kills goodwill in the community. Mm -hmm. So I want the writers to know what they're signing. Look, it's exclusive in perpetuity, so it's serious. Know what you're signing, you know. So do I want them to go to attorneys? That'd be great. A lot of them don't want to spend the dough. That's a choice. You go to an attorney. You choose a cheap one. You choose an expensive one. Their choices. If the attorney says no and you buy into what the attorney says, look, fine. Let's not. We don't play ball. It, I don't get. It, I don't get tripped by that at all. If you're going to go to an attorney, go to an attorney that knows the particulars of that industry. And, and look, there are a lot of people. You and I both know major publishers, big publishers, that really don't understand our world. That's true. Uh, you can talk to somebody at a giant publishing company about film and TV. We have people that have tried to that wanted to work at Taxi, uh, very high level people, either uh, as screeners or as staff members, and they said, "Well, I, I worked at Sony in film and TV uh, in music licensing at Sony." Well, that's licensing, uh, you know, a Janet Jackson track. I, mean, I don't even know if she was with Sony or not, but you know what I'm saying. That's different than working with. people doing instrumental cues, um, and I'm not diminishing, you know what I'm trying to say. Well, there's, Janet, varying, there's Janet, varying degrees. Yeah, Janet Jackson is, you know, that's a $200,000 thing versus sure. a $2,000 thing. Well, before you enter this level of the business, where you're even pitching to you, yeah, I would encourage people to know the business. You know, we try to teach them. That's why we do this. That's why we do the road I, I, and all this, this stuff. And this is why I like to do this because you. you know writers should be informed. Um, and I think there's a lot of very bad information out there. Of course, this is just my opinion. One person, other people may. Hey, a lot of people don't. Uh, you know, have differing opinions about varying business models than I do. And you know what? Everyone makes a choice. Yeah. You know, so if you go to a bad attorney, the bad attorney advises you poorly. Hopefully, the bad attorney doesn't advise you to, to sign some god awful contract with some god awful com company. Then you're then you could be screwed. You know, you want to know what you're doing. You want to know what you're signing. Um, there are a million books. Um, I be I've never been on it, but I guess there's a taxi forum where a yeah. lot of the, the 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 vet members are sharing information. I would go there. Yeah. Um Yes, I, I will say that members who are experienced with certain libraries will report to other members, yes, I've had a multi-year, multi-song or multi-track relationship with this company and they've been nothing but straight up. It's and, it's not legal advice, but it's practical advice. And, right. And if you get enough people telling you that, it's pretty believable. Right. It's still good to have an attorney read a, a contract. If it's the right attorney. And, yeah. and I don't even think we're talking about a bad attorney or a crooked attorney. We're talking about attorneys that know the industry. I wouldn't hire a music attorney to do a real estate deal. Right. And, you know, this is another point where I have to get on the phone with writers. Although many times I'll have Amy do it because she's so uh, good with legalese. But, you know, you have writers reading the contract and going, well, what, wait a second. This says, da, 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 what, what does that mean? You know, and you know what? Look. Google it. Well, yeah, but there's certain things. There, there are things in my contract, uh, which my attorney who just retired, um, and we just had dinner with the other night. Um, Tell me, said hi. I will. Uh, 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 you know, there are things in that contract that he, in his wisdom, wrote in because he has seen. He knows the business. He's a music attorney. I mean, anything under the sun can happen on any given day. Meaning, like, I can have, and this has happened. A company will call me and go. I love this track. I want it to be a main title for this particular show. Mm -hmm. You go, okay, yeah. So what we what we want to do is we want to do a. It could be I love you, baby, and then they want to tag it, mm -hmm. uh, 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 the name of the show, mm -hmm. Shorty's theme or whatever the heck it is. 
that's changing the title of the song. You know, I have to have the ability to make those decisions right. on the fly. So people see your contract and the, they you go, you're the doing event. retitles, right. which we don't do. So there's certain, th there's parameters in my contract. I mean, I, I'll get somebody and go, uh, uh, oh, that, this would be perfect. Can, you, can this be done in Portuguese? Well, once you translate a song into Portuguese, now it's no longer, it may not be called, I love you, baby. It's going to be, I, I don't speak Portuguese, but it may be whatever that is. Yeah. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Now it's a new piece of music. And then, I mean, usually that's a, a series of phone calls. Hey, are you okay with this? Um, we're going to do the, but, but my contract allows us to move in those situations. Editing. I have to be able to have an editor go, well, you know what? I like the back end of the song first and then the front of the song. Mm -hmm. Or I only want the middle of the song and then I, I got to cut right to the end of the song. So I have to be able to contractually edit the piece of music. Yeah. There are some major artists that won't let you do it. Right, because you're messing with their art. You're messing with their art. I have to have that in my contract. So I get those phone calls going, what do you mean you can alter, or edit, or, you know, it's like, well, yeah. You know. uh, what about the person you license it to? The, you know, the music editor for the show could edit it to work in a montage. Well, this is it. Yeah. In fact, I got a killer montage, just an unbelievable montage uh, in Rain, not that long back. And uh, they definitely edited the song because they needed it to go cut to the instrumental track under a long, oh my God, it was like almost three minutes long. Killer use. Uh. Have you been watching Billions? On no, Showtime? not this season. Not this season. I watched Jim Black is the music soup on it. Well, Jim's who was on. I was on the phone with this morning. The quality. He's fantastic. Can you introduce me to him so that I can compliment him? Because I, I literally, yeah. I, I'm known to call supervisors at home on a Sunday night after seeing an episode. Air, don't, don't call him on a Sunday night. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best. Uh, there are a couple that I could do that with. And I, I love the craft of music supervision. When I see one song cut across three storylines and five scenes over three minutes, and everything about it works. And you just said the hair on your arm goes up because you know how much work went into that. He's one of the big ones. Yeah. Jim's yeah. Yeah, yeah Jim's fantastic. And, and a cross person. There are some well, there are some that I am blessed to work with that are just oh my god. So lucky. I'm him. I'm in awe of him. I I, I after I think seeing, I met him doing Treme. Or no, no. Uh 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 Oh god, what was that friggin' show? It was the there was a big one before. Yeah, I think he was on Treme, but it was the one before that. It was um, The Wire. Mm. Jim did it, The Wire. Yeah, all I can say is just spectacular. Yeah. Um, I, I After seeing the final, the second to the last episode of um, Billions this past season, it just ended a couple of weeks ago, I wanted to call him and make him the guy who I started the rally out with this year to talk to him about the craft of supervision not just the make sure you've got you know your metadata and all that stuff but the actual craft because the guy's a genius I'll see if I can put you guys together thank you yeah. I, 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 I'm in awe of his work all right um, well we're a little long but I know you guys get really cranky um, yeah I do mention billions a lot but it's because everything about the show works everything down to the music supervision it's quality storyline Quality writing, quality acting, quality cinematography, everything about that show is an A+. Plus. It, it just, I'm surprised it hasn't been canceled. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get so inspired when I see quality like that. Right. It's just like, wow, everybody had their act together when right. they made that show. It's inspiring to me. All right, so let's take some questions. Um, <laughs> well, the it final takes, countdown, really. Um, it takes like 20 seconds for them to hear what we said and then start typing. Gotcha. Don't forget, before you leave, I want to play the Irish folk music. Oh, I did a bunch of business with Treme. We did a lot of business on that show. Okay, uh, question. Uh, what do you do for music soups? Look for, make up your... Go what do you, or music soups, look for to make up your go-to artist list? What do you or you? How, how do I get on? How do I get on the 
you know, favorite artist list? Oh, for me to go to as oh, writers? Or soups, yeah. Well, you know, you hear something that somebody does, and, you know, I mean, there are cer certain supervisors that I will cer send certain taxi artists to, and uh, they will know the name after a season of something. And if I send that same name the following season, they will go, oh, love this person. Yes, send more. And I will reach out to those go-to writers, and I will go, hey, another season's coming up. If you want to be, you know, in the mix, you may want to come up with another blah, blah, blah in this sort of frame. We know it worked last season, but da 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 Yeah. Spin it off. Uh I, I was going to ask you another question, but I don't want to steal time from these guys. Uh, question, would you date a girl with a mezuzah tattooed on her inner thigh? Wow. Wow. I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> Hello. My wife would not appreciate it. <laughs> uh, there, there were a lot of questions, questions earlier. earlier. Well, to scroll Sorry, back. we were talking. To, yeah. Um, how important is mastering? That's a great question. Uh, do you guys take stuff and master it yourselves? Or do you expect the people... Occasionally I will. Yeah. Um, nine times out of ten, I prefer not to. I would prefer that the artist or musician has their P's and Q's together and um, send me a final mastered version. Um, I will go back to writers and go, you know, love this song, you need to master it. And if it needs mastering, you can guess who I'm going to send them to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So... Um, I'm going <laughs> to get a million people asking me. There are many great mastering people. Yes, there are. Uh, if you have to ask what mastering is, or don't try and do it yourself. And let, mastering, mastering is an art um, and a craft, and it takes a little time to learn. So if you, you can't just go buy mastering software and have it work out great from the get-go. So is this? Get, get a professional. Uh, what is your... What is your favorite adult, adult beverage? beverage. Uh, 1989 uh, Chateau Margaux. Um, uh, uh, oh, here's a question. Wow. Uh, we had a question, a conversation about the publishers giving up 100% of rights. We're seeing this a lot now where people will call taxi, want to run a listing with us, and they say, in the listing, you need to tell them that we've given up 100% of our publisher share, so we're dipping into the writer's share. I won't run the listings. I piss say off. Say this again? We have people, libraries, reputable libraries, brand name libraries, that... Oh, they say they've already given up 100% of the publishing to a particular... Production. Pr They're giving up the pr publishing they, to a production, and they are now turning to the writers, taking writer share, and I won't run the listings. Good. Yeah, I high five you on that. Thank you. Yes, truthfully, this is, you know, in the next the next place it's going is direct direct licensing. Which explain uh, what that is. Well, first off, with this, uh, that business of giving up a hundred percent of the publishing to an entity to get a piece of music used, there's, if you're doing, <laughs> it is not a good practice. Here's why. You, you sign a writer, you have their music, you, you go, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, take 100% of the publishing. So they take 100% of the publishing on this track. So what happens to the track after it goes to this one production? Unless it's been retitled. Yeah. And then you go, okay, sure, I'll give up the publishing, but we got to retitle it. How do I feel about retitles? Well, this is the, the bane, I believe, yeah. of this business. And so now this company's going to have your song title, they're going to have 100% of the publishing, um, which they may use it in one episode of one show, and that's it. And there, there are some people that I feel are building an in-house in catalog where they're legitimately doing it because they've got several reality shows. They're building cues, which I, I see cues sure. as more disposable. And I hate, I'm using that word very carefully, but it's not like a song. That... The only thing I would say about disposable is I, 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 would, I would refer you to some of your very big instrumental composers. I'm not that, saying... that when I talk to them about their quarterly royalty statements, right? They're, they're, they're <laughs> you know, don't give that up to a single product. That's me. I'm 
That's me, and I'm glad you're not running those listings. I, I think I'm talking it's... about somebody building. I'm not talking about somebody reaching out to you saying, "We'll put your stuff mm -hmm. from your catalog in our show if you give us the publishing." I'm talking about somebody that's building their own in-house library because they produce. Oh, I see. What they produce six reality shows. I got you. And so they know that they're going to get these cues used across several shows. Gotcha. Where if one show dies, these cues will live another day for another show. Gotcha. I'm okay with that because they're cues, and it's fairly easy for good cue makers <laughs> good sure. to, sure. to crank out more of those versus sure. you know pouring your heart into a song for a week or two sure so in those cases uh, and, and especially um, where they're giving somebody you know a hundred bucks up front for it I mean I understand more that. okay with it I understand that. but I get very upset by the the publishers that have come to us and say we're working with the show a production and we're giving up a hundred percent of the publishing on some portion, I, I think they're giving them like, you know, 500 to 1,000 songs, all they can eat for a season. Mm -hmm. And they're dipping the writers. Yeah. Criminal. Not actually criminal, but. No, it, you know, and, and the reason I, I know this isn't criminal is because, you know, I had an instance where I co wrote a theme yeah. for a show. They said, oh, you know, it's a work for hire. Well, my understanding of work for hire was not their understanding of a work for hire. What was your understanding? My understanding of, for, of a work for hire was you pay me, right? I get the dough. Of course, you're going to get the publishing. Mm -hmm. But I still have my writer's share. Oh, their work for hire was 100% both their sides? Their work for yes. I'm like, well, who's going to be the, listed as the writer? They are. Two fictitious names, wherever that's going to go. You know, well, truth of the matter is, like you say, Cues. Mm -hmm. It was a cue. It was 30 seconds. A minute? 30 seconds. I can't remember. The thing that was sad was it was for a big show. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's still airing. You know, we're talking 10 years ago this happened. Wow. Um, and it was the theme. Right? So, you know, we took the dough. I, yeah. I called my co-writer. I said, do you want to do this? Truth of the matter is, we wrote it in 20 minutes. We had it recorded within an hour. And it was a chunk of change. Mm -hmm. It was like... You know, so you make the choices. Right. That's one thing. But you know, this this other thing where per, companies are doing what you're talking about, I think it's, you know, awful. And then, like I say, where it's probably going to go, you know, and it's already going, is direct licensing. And this direct licensing oh, is yeah. where a company will reach out to a publisher like myself and go, well, you know, we only do direct licensing. Do you, you know, do you want to play ball? Direct licensing means basically there will be no cue sheet, there will be no performance royalties. It means I get a chunk of change for possibly the use of my catalog over a season. Mm -hmm. How do I pay writers? So it'll be, I'll get a check. The, the deal would be I would get a check for use of anything in my catalog for a season. Mm -hmm. Possibly a year. You know, I've seen everything. Yeah. You know, so I take the money. How do I pay my writers? Well, that happens all the time. I won't do it. I know you won't, and that's why you're sitting here on my show. But I won't do it. You and but I you're both, right. It we does, know people it happens that do all it all the time. Yeah. So if you're a writer, and and I'm talking huge, huge libraries will do this. Yes. Major ones. Yes, yes, yes. And the writers will never know because there's never a cue sheet and there's never performance income unless you happen to come across the show and you're watching. And what makes me sick is when people say, I didn't, they go on certain websites and say, Taxi sucks, I didn't get this thing forwarded for that listing, and I sent it off and got it into a library on my own, only I find out later it was in that library that's one of those, we'll take practically anything libraries, and then they do that exact deal you're talking about, but yet, Taxi is the entity that publicly takes it on the chin because we look bad because we didn't forward them to you. Right. So to those people, I say, baboom. Well, yeah, and this is unfortunately, uh, I know I have major television show composer friends, mm -hmm. and you know, we're out to dinner and ah, you know, blah blah blah. Network offered me this show, direct license, no performance income. So they would get a check. Now they have to make the decision. Do I take the check and score the show? Or do I go no? And composers are, you know, especially Feast young ones. Famine. Well yeah. I'm a lot of famine. Yeah, you gotta pay bills. Yeah. So it's it's interesting leverage that's going on. 
Uh, another question or two. We are we're 15, 14 minutes long, but I think you guys um, are hanging in there. Hi, Pedro. In the segment, in the agreement, you get a show to provide a listing of usages. That's what, oh, he's answering someone else's question, I think. Uh, uh, all right, a couple more questions, because we actually do have to end before my staff leaves. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> um, no, I'm saying that I need questions from them. Oh, it's uh, almost six. Wow. Yeah, and we were supposed to end 14 minutes ago. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you're okay staying. I'm right? fine. I'm okay. fine. I gotta get home to my 1989 uh, Chateau Moir. <laughs> uh, question is: There a genre you can't find enough of? <laughs> that was actually one of the things I didn't wow. get to. Is there a genre well, I can't I find was, enough of? Because people um, will often say to library owners, "What genre do you need the most?" Um, I, okay, here's here's a mistake. Yeah. Don't reach out to a publisher and go, what are you looking for? Right. Well, I'll tell you why <laughs> that's a faux pas. Because on any given day, I could be looking for traditional Chinese, Russian hip hop, uh, Black Keys, Rolling Stone. I mean, yeah. all on the same day. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for killer music in every genre imaginable at any given time. And I don't know from day to day. I mean, you, it would blow your mind what it, I see on a given. It day. wouldn't blow my mind, but I, I'm, I'm a guy who likes to go with probabilities. So if the question is, where is my greater chance of making money with music? Um, what are things that are going to get used? Everybody in the industry would tell you EDM and hip hop are very hot right now this year and have been for a little while. That could change starting tomorrow. Right. And look at the charts well the other thing I try and I, I encourage writers to do not just with me but with other publishers is see who their clients are we all put our clients uh, on our website go and see who we're doing business with I don't know that people will read between the lines well enough they can see that you know you work with this show or that show right what they don't do is the deeper research to and, and you got to look forward not not necessarily backwards or in the present, but um, what was the show with the pretty blonde lady that was a CIA agent that was on USA Network for five or six seasons? Uh, oh, goodness gracious. You know what I mean, right? You're challenging me now. Uh, uh, anyway, you know, I have a theory, which I've talked about on Taxi TV, bars, cars, and restaurants. Um, almost every TV show seems to have bars, cars, and restaurants. So I would look at a show and go, okay, they're going to Russia this season. Uh, sure. Let's use Homeland. We know sure. that two seasons ago, they spent a lot of time in Germany. Sure. So what do they need in Germany? Bars, cars, and restaurants. Absolutely. So that's when I look to catalogs, publishers, and go, oh, you're working with Homeland? Do you need any? And we will call Bob up and say, do you need any of this? We've been hearing some great this or that genre. So for that case, I would say, you guys work with Homeland, right? Do you want any German music because it looks like they're going to Germany next season? He would say, great idea. Absolutely. And if you uh, want to hit a publisher square between the eyes, you go, I see this show is coming back. I'm noticing this season they're going to be uh, set in 1984. Mm -hmm. I have this music.
Oh. <laughs> Are we off? Are we no, on? No, we're back. I don't know why that happened. I haven't had that happen in the like, feed got cut off. Like six months. Buffering freezing. We're back. We are back. Sorry about that. We don't know why. All of a sudden, we went black on this end, too. Um, but, but everybody's saying thank you. So let's call it a night. Good night, um, you guys. And, I, and hopefully, you we enjoyed. Do, yeah. Uh, and thank you, as always. Of I mean, course. You and I. We could chat that, forever. Yeah, we could. Um, but it's great having you on here because you understand our members. You understand Taxi. And you I and I you have guys. great rapport. So Absolutely. Thank you, and we love you. Uh, subscribe like us all these things are good for our channel and we will see you guys next week what is next week uh oh no next week is labor day there will be no show but the monday after that i am going to chuck henry's house and we are going to lay down some hip-hop beats live on the show nice yeah and um, while you're doing that you should record them and then send them over to empire so that they can write a song <laughs> <There you go. laughs> with that Thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Bob. Of course. Oh, it's a pleasure. See you guys. See you next week. Another round of applause. Yeah.